Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this is the part two video about the eclipse of the 20th of April 2023 and it lists five danger energies within the eclipse that it's so helpful to be aware of if you can unlock the truly vast authenticity, power and success that this eclipse offers. So the first note of caution is about Aries impatience and this eclipse is in Aries and Aries energy is very impatient if you're in Aries you can't hit me I'm in the west of Ireland a bit of a, a bit of a distance away and this eclipse falls in Ashwini nakshatra the healing nakshatra but Ashwini's energy too is very impatient Ashwini's symbol is stallions streaking across the skies of dawn. They rush across the skies, ideally, to heal. So, at the time of this eclipse and following, beware destabilising. Now, boredom can make an Aries guy do anything. OK, second joke about Aries. So what you have to do with this eclipse is let your boredom that you might be feeling or your frustration guide you to the new you in the line of your needed goals and ambitions to express yourself more fully, to become yourself more fully. And let the determination of this eclipse energy be expressed carefully in a loving, ethical way. K2, South Node, is transiting through Libra at this sign. So each one of us on this planet is called to examine and understand and raise the level of our relationship skills. That's why I created the international dating site for those on a spiritual journey at this time. Love Star Dating. Now the second note of caution I must make is that this eclipse contains North Node, driven Rahu energy, Rahu the North Node. This eclipse is conjunct Rahu the North Node, Sun and Moon are at 5 Aries, Rahu is at 10 Aries, also in Ashwini Nakshatra. Now the Sun-Rahu combination is vast, power driven, desire driven, self assertion driven, it's, I can think of three world leaders that have it. Son Conjunct Rahu. Not necessarily used for the good at all. Rahu is driven ambition. It's actually the indicator for our incarnational life path in this life. Our way of life in this life. We all of us come in where Ketu is from past life and each of us is thrown across our chart to Rahu, always opposite. But um, Rahu's energy is driven. That's because if it wasn't driven, we humans might not get to the other side. But the point is we have to purify Rahu's energy if we're actually to get to the other side. Other facets in our life goal at this time, of course, and it's not just Ketu and Rahu, it's things like our Atma Karika, our soul indicator planet. And for example, our Dara Karika, the planet whose nature indicates the sort of person we're seeking in love relationship. Vedic astrology has these wonderful, helpful definitions and they're valid. So, because the North Node is act and the South Node are activated now, this is such a good time for past life work and soul realignment. So, see my wife Maggie Pashley's healing website where she does past life, future life healings and soul realignment healings. Okay, the third of the five notes of caution about some of the real problem energies within this eclipse in addition to its wonderful potential that I outlined in the part one video. Mars is wounded. Chiron is square Mars. 
Chiron is at 22 Vedic Pisces. Mars is at nearly 19 Vedic Gemini. And Mars is transiting Ardra Nakshatra, which is ruled by Rahu. And Ardra's energy is totally my way or the highway. So watch out, please, for bursts of anger. Watch out, please, for angry communications, especially as it's not only Mars in Mercury's sign of Gemini, but Mars but Mercury in Mars sign of Aries. There is um, an Aries, Gemini, Mercury, Mars exchange now, which can go very wrong unless we're aware. So watch out for dictated demands and ultimatums. Okay, the fourth note of caution. We need to... Be prepared for the fact that Mercury is fraught. Mercury is conjunct the fixed star Menkar at the time of this eclipse. Our concepts and communications could be the victim of our unconscious material. We need to be in contact with our unconscious material. It's when we're not in contact with it that it drives us. And we can't think, why? What was that? What made me so angry or whatever? Don't understand it. And at this time of this eclipse, your communication could even bring about disagreement or ruin, and it will for some people. I know. Uh, also, to do with the fourth note of caution, Mercury is fraught. Mercury is closely conjunct Uranus in the chart of this eclipse. Now, positively, this will bring you astuteness, intuition, revolutionary spirit, revolutionary mind, inventive thinking, talent for speaking, intellectual flexibility, the power to influence others. The establishment of innovations and inventions, sudden cognitions and mental perceptions. But negatively, you have to, and I have to, watch out for having too many irons in the fire. Remember, there's a strong Rahu, scattered, driven energy. And, you know, Mercury is very fraught now. So there's, it's so important to avoid scattering your energies now. Uh, and there could also be tactlessness, brutal frankness, self-overestimation, upset, failure caused through scatter or haste. Now the fifth note of caution is Lilith. Um, Lilith is square mercury uranus at the time of this eclipse now i stated in part one how the lilith potential could actually transform you and your expression because it you will delve into your shadow area and bring forth what's hidden there and including an ethical expression of your wild side and we all need to express and identify our wild side we have to be open to our shadow self. But the danger potential of Lilith Square Mercury at the time period of this eclipse and going forward is that some people will get caught up in over-the-top activism, rage, overstating themselves or their words could become power abusive of others. There could be compulsive speaking outrage that needs to be managed by strong ethical communication skills and conversely make sure you yourself aren't being trampled on at the time of this eclipse so i have already mentioned the wonderful potential of lilith square uranus uh, that was in the part one video and it truly is wonderful but the danger potential of Lilith Square Uranus is that your anger could bubble up and overspill and get obsessed. 
You need to be revolutionary. You need to be true to yourself. You must not let others suppress your individuality. You need to make the dramatic changes the real you really wants now. So, my very best wishes for your handling of this eclipse and my handling of this eclipse. May your new projects flower. May the projects you've been working on for ages and getting nowhere with flower now. May you have success. May you avoid the cautions and dangers that are actually part of this supremely wonderful eclipse energy. So to get a reading from me, go to my Star Wheel Astrology website, go to the buy page, and, you know, for healing and relationship issues, go to my Love Star Dating Healers page. Please do subscribe to my Star Wheel Astrology blog and my Love Star Dating blog. And join my Facebook page, the Love Star Dating Facebook page, if that applies to you, and the Star Wheel Astrology Facebook page. See the healings offered by my wife, Maggie Pashley. They're listed on her healer page in Love Star Dating. So I do hope these two videos about the eclipse of the 20th of April will be of great help to you into coming into your power and potential and delivering your heartfelt projects. I'm next going to film a vision journey for those who like contacting the energies of astrological phenomena in a vision way, seeing them mapped in vision and handling them for success in the vision world. Thank you.